Shoe dog your passion will override people who think you're crazy. Phil Knight imported Japanese running shoes to America. He was a crappy and bashful salesman. Knight took a flight and went across to Japan and put his suggestion to a room full of Japanese businessmen. He didn't think something meaningful would come out of it. But to his surprise, the CEO of Onisuka Tiger agreed to start him off with 300 pairs of shoes. He sold the shoes from the trunk of his car for a few upcoming months. He experienced passionate feelings for the support of Western human advancement, the Greek Acropolis. Phil Knight was so fascinated by it that he would stand for hours in the queue in the front of the temple. A long time later he unearthed a play called The Knights, where a ruler gets another pair of shoes as a blessing in the Nike temple. Onboarding Bill Bowman Phil Knight was a sprinter himself and he respected his mentor, Bill Bowman. While dealing with his Anasuka bringing in business, Bill acknowledged joining Phil to deal with it. That was incredible planning. Phil was preparing future Olympian competitors, and that was of incredible assistance to spread and offer exposure to Phil's shoes. Phil was what in the business was alluded to as a shoe dog. He would dismantle shoes, at that point amass them again with various pieces and parts as he continued looking for making them lighter and better performing. Phil additionally assisted with the shoe structure himself. The primary significant deal achievement originated from Bill's shoe change that Phil sent back to Japan for creation. Blue Ribbon Early Beginnings To be sure the organization wasn't called Nike initially. It was the Blue Strip. In any case, in 1971, when they chose to quit selling Onisuka shoes and building their own SHOES, they required another name. The name Nike came up in Jeff Johnson's dream. The Early Nike Team Incidentally, a portion of the Nike core team was the opposite of sporty, one was bound to a wheelchair after an accident, two were morbidly overweight, some of them smoked two packs a day. Knight defies some modern views on management. He rarely responds to questions, letters, or other correspondence. He doesn't seem to be a manager, but more of a leader. The work they do is full of purpose sometimes driven by spite and old grudges, but the first handful of people are looking for something outside of a 9-to-5 workday in law firms or accounting offices. Knight often quotes General MacArthur. Don't tell people how to do things, tell them what to do, and let them surprise you with their results. And later on, he admits that. My management style wouldn't have worked for people who wanted to be guided, every step, but this group found it liberating, empowering. They are all dedicated to the purpose, making running better and finding ways to contribute. Plus, they all share into important decisions, taking regular team retreats to work on bigger questions. Let your team in on making decisions. Don't advise individuals how to get things done, instruct them, and let them shock you with their results. What's more, later on, he concedes that my executive style wouldn't have worked for individuals who needed to be guided, each progression however, this gathering discovered it freeing, empowering. They are completely devoted to the reason, improving running and discovering approaches to contribute. In addition, they all offer significant choices, taking ordinary group retreats to deal with greater inquiries. Knight doesn't oversee them, he empowers them. They didn't know where they were going. It's in every case simple to recount a story after it occurred. It is an incredible deception of our psyches, since we are a Lisa it occurred, it was the main way it could have occurred. Knight doesn't embark to fabricate a domain, nor does HE need to disturb or upset the shoe markets. He needs to improve running by improving the devices, shoes, and sprinters' well-being. He battles, he battles, and at long last, significantly in the wake of splitting $140 million in deals, he says. But instead of cherishing how far we'd come, I saw only how far we had to go. Stay true to your values. Phil Knight says that Nike leased space in sweatshops simply as numerous different companies did. He says that the organization consistently contended energetically to improve the living and working states of all SPE stylists before the embarrassment broke. In one case, it was halted by a neighborhood government official since laborers gaining more than specialists would be terrible for the economy. However, Knight acknowledged they needed to invest more energy and accomplish more.